Radio Hustle with Alexis Conran, enemy of the con man on Talk Radio. Welcome back to the show, 48 minutes past one. You're listening to Alexis Conran here on Talk Radio. I'm still quite shocked by the fact that Ofcom seems to think that eight weeks is the amount of time uh, that an ISP should be given to sort out your problem with your broadband before you can go to the ombudsman. Eight weeks is way too long, isn't it? Um, 0344 499 1000 is the number you need if you want to give me your point of view. Uh, talk, uh, you can text talk to 87222 or you can tweet us at Talk Radio or at Alexis Conrad. Now, yesterday I, I put out a tweet um, because I always think every time I've ever had a problem with my broadband provider, I always get, have to do the same thing over and over again. You call up and it's like restart your router. Then they proceed to tell you how far away is your machine from your router, where is your router, what's your cabling like, are you using any extension? I mean, and I have to say, most of the time, the broadband provider seems to be set on basically saying, look, our, uh, from our end, everything's fine, so obviously something's wrong at your end. So I ask the question of, does restarting your router actually do anything, or is it one of those things where they get you to do it just so they can feel as if they've done something? And uh, you feel as if they've sort of helped you. Um, got a lot of replies, which is, was quite inter- interesting. Uh, Stuski on Twitter says, yes, it re- reinitializes the hardware, frees up memory, clears the app cache, and if it's crashed, it's maybe your only option. Uh, Average Joe says, yep, the router communicates to the equipment at the exchange. If you turn it off every night, it could slow your net speed down. Leave it on. I didn't ask whether I should leave it on all night. Anyway, thanks for your reply. Uh, Deb said, well, I did it just now, otherwise I couldn't have read your tweet. Thank you very much, Deb. Um, but I also had some, uh, a reply uh, from Rev K. Uh, it says, yes, slots, restart hardware and software, resyncing the line, important after fault and interference, can upset the DLM and mean slow service. Now, I don't quite understand what the DLM is, uh, but I'm happy to say that uh, Rev Kev, his real name is Adrian Kennard, and he's on the line uh, joining me right now. Thanks for coming on the show, Adrian. Hi. So I believe that you uh, know your stuff around the tech uh, and everything, and also you run your own ISP service. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's AAISP, and we've got lots of customers all over the country. So what's your take on uh, the complaints and people complaining about their speed and uh, it taking so long to sort out? But let, let, as an ISP, do you think that when the problems arrive, is it usually the ISP's fault or is it the, uh, the network that's already there, the BT OpenReach network? What's the main problems that you guys as ISPs have to put up with to keep maintain the speed? Uh, well, it's not just about speed, to be honest. Um, okay. the, the, there's a speed that you can get because of the quality and length of your line and that, that is one thing and if there's faults with that it can be slower and there can be things that make it seem slower but there's also um, faults that can happen and we have a lot of, um, a lot of challenges in trying to address faults that can happen because they can happen in the home you can have sure. problems in the home and Wi-Fi is a particular area where people don't appreciate that Wi-Fi, it, it's using radio signals, it's got to get through the walls in their house. One wireless access point, often in the corner of the house in a cupboard where the phone line comes in, is not necessarily ideal. So these sorts of problems, which are really outside the remit of the ISP, are something we do have to check that that isn't the cause. So it's, that's why you get asked some of these questions at the start, really. Yeah, no, and I appreciate that. I'm just a little bit worried that sometimes it can be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Oh, because yes. as you said, there's so many variables. And sometimes you're dealing with people who are not technically versed on the other side of the line. Um, uh, but I have found that many ISPs are very, very quick to say, no, no, everything's fine on our end. <laughs> Must be something that you're doing wrong. Well, um, a lot of ISPs can't quite see the level of detail we can. We're a little unusual that we have constant quality monitoring. We're monitoring the loss and latency on every line every second and we actually we make graphs of the, the information available to our customers and our more technical customers really appreciate it but it does mean that when someone phones up we can already see before we've asked any questions or asked them to turn off a router we can see is there actually a problem with their line do they actually have a packet loss has the speed dropped what's going on with their line before before anything else so it makes it a lot easier for us to tell is it likely to be the customer equipment or likely to be something on the line or something, in the, even in the backhaul networks that connect us to the customers? 
Now, are you are you unique in doing that? I mean, With, don't, shouldn't all IPs <laughs> be doing something like that? I wish they did. Um, we actually make routers as well. We design and manufacture our own routers that go at the ISP end, and that's what lets us do this. And we do sell these. Um, actually, under our brand Firebrick, we sell sell the routers and there are probably a dozen or so small ISPs, most of which are a lot smaller than us, that do use the same equipment so they do have that. But the big ISPs don't have the same level of monitoring. And we're often in a position of finding faults in the in the core backhaul networks that the carriers aren't aware of, but we can see because we've got a number of customers, perhaps in one exchange, all all with the same problem on their line, even when no customers actually phoned us to report a fault. What's the symbiosis like between ISPs and the network, the sort of the BT Open Reach network? Is it fairly easy to sort of ask it's... them to fix stuff and, and sort of say, look, <laughs> you've got to get onto it because our customers are, are, are losing speed? It's quite an amazing uh, relationship, really. We, we have parts of um, companies like BT and, and Talk Talk that we deal with, Talk Talk Business, do backhaul as well. And we have parts of those companies that absolutely love us. Um, we, we've dealt with people in, in technical departments of BT who will phone us up to, to ask if, if we can see any problems at a certain exchange or something. Um, and then there's other parts of BT that really hate us because we are notorious for, um, well, it says on our bullshit, uh, taking no bullshit on our website. <laughs> I'm not sure whether I can say that on the radio, but hopefully uh, uh, I can. Yeah, uh, um, just, I'll, let you, I'll let you off just the once, but no thank more, you. please. Thank um, you. Um, but that's the point. We... we we work out that there is a problem with the line, if there is, and we do eliminate what could be causing things at the customer's premises if we have to, and then we make sure that the carrier gets on and gets it fixed. If necessary, that might mean an engineer going out, that might mean equipment in their network needs fixing, and we make sure it gets fixed. So let me ask you this, because, I mean, it, it's funny because smaller ISP providers, you guys are sort of, it's a bit like the energy market, you guys are mm. very small players in a very, very big market, dominated by big, big players, oh, yes. your Virgins, your Talk Talks, your Skies. Um, how, do you think the future is smaller companies like yours, because you're able to sort of offer a much more tailored um, uh, approach to dealing with your customers? I think one of the biggest complaints as well that Witch found is, was the way that the complaints were handled by the big companies. Oh, we're, we're um, yeah, we don't get that many complaints because we do have very well-trained technical support staff and because we t take this attitude of actually trying to get to the bottom of the problem and getting it fixed. So complaints are very rare, but it's different for some of the really big ISPs and there's there's always a place for the smaller ISPs and I, I hope that the people like Ofcom continue to make sure the market works well enough that there is a place for us because there are people who appreciate what we can we can offer the much much better technical quality and and expertise in providing don't a good get, quality service don't you get priced out of the market though don't you become because my my and i haven't looked into uh, independent isps that closely mm. but my uh, my feeling is that independent isps are, are more for sort of expert users or for people who've got particular needs or in particular areas but for, for sort of city dwellers who are doing your average home usage, an independent ISP will never be able to compete pricing-wise with uh, the big one. Well, we, we try not to play the game of being the lowest price. We'd never win against the large players, even if we wanted to. And we, uh, we try and make sure we invest in the, in the network so things like we don't slow down at peak times because we have right. enough capacity. But that costs money. So it is difficult to compete on price, but I think we sell at a fair price. And there are occasions where people have compared us to the package they're on with another large ISP and found us to actually work out cheaper. It does happen. It depends also what you need. Some of the, some of the extras that are only available on business packages come as standard on our service. Sure. Well, Adrian, thank you so much for getting in touch over Twitter. I'm afraid we've run out of time. Uh, okay. The uh, website, your website, is aa.net.uk. That's uh, okay. uh, And thank you for, uh, for your contribution today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Okay, no problem.